Welcome to another Plan 6 Parts Tips video. Today's video, valve guides. Uh, the valve guides are probably one of the most common things to overlook when you're uh, when people are doing their engines. I don't know why, but you never seem to change the valve guides as much. Um, you check the, maybe check the play in them, but you never change them. My suggestion is, if you're going to go that far and rebuild your engine, you're going to strip it all like this, strip it all the way down to the head, strip all the engine down, put new uh, pistons and everything in it, or whatever it may be, why would you leave these in it? They're not expensive to change. Yes, you could turn around and say, okay, well, you have 20 tails of play. It's somewhere between 14 and 18. It's, there's nothing wrong with it. But the things have been in there for 50 years. I mean, surely after 50 years, you're rebuilding the engine. Why, why would you leave them in it? They're not an expensive thing. Like I said, it's not big hundreds of dollars to change. It's not. Like, what would it cost you? $40, if that, for all the full set of 12. And now you're going back to nice clean precision um, valve guides so my recommendation if you're going to change an engine change the valve guides so how do we get them out um what i use to get them out um is this very expensive tool uh, i broke the bank getting it it's a quarter inch drive uh deep socket five sixteenths so very expensive very very expensive <laughs> look at that this works great, all right? Um, get in the toolbox, uh, you shouldn't do much damage to it. You shouldn't do any, but if you have a spare one, great. And the reason why I use that is, if we look at the normal valve guide, um, it's pretty similar in size. You can flush it up, it will, it will bump up to a pretty good, but it's slim enough to fit in the hole. It's, it's slim enough to fit and actually go up now. I know that's not the valve guide hole, but it's the same size. And it just, whoop, there you go. So I don't have to worry about pushing something out and getting something else stuck in there. Anyway, um, these come out pretty easy enough. Um, when I say come out easy enough, they do and they don't. Um, once you break the pressure point on it, they come out pretty easy. Um, however, and that's the important thing you have to know about this is lining them up. Um, if you don't line them up straight, now I know this is pretty good, but and, and I've done it. And I have one here in my hand. Uh, before I was uh, trying to cheat and put it straight onto it. Like directly on and push down from the beginning from there all the way down. So I could do it in one. Um, I didn't, one of them with valves, I, one of the valve guys, I wasn't exactly flush. So what happens is I ended up with this. It's all broken, twisted. It's hard to see, but it's all pushed in. The reason why is that when this was butted up to it. Uh, I don't know if it's exactly this one. Uh, it was but it was it wasn't exactly straight, so it was off a bit. So when it went off, it turned, and I put the pressure in. So I ended up like this. Hence why it even broke. It actually ended up going down. So because of that, I wasn't able to reset it. Um, I was just trying to cheat and do it in one because what I'd normally do, and this is what I recommend doing, is this is a two ton press, simple press. Um, use the basic parts of it. You don't need anything underneath. Like you can put some cardboard or something underneath if you don't want to scrape and if you haven't painted it. But you want to use the standard point of it and then push down and break that compression that's been in there. It's been in there for 50 years. It's not coming out that easy to go. It's going to go out with a bang, literally. When you break that, uh, see, and you push down, you have a bigger surface there. If you push down, you're going to go down as far as you can go without touching the head. You don't want to um, put pressure on the head at all. You don't need to press down to that if there's no need to. You can if you want it, but I'd say stop a little bit short. When you do that, instead of bringing it up and then putting this on and driving the rest of the way, do the rest of them. Do the exact same thing, work your way from here, and work your way all the way up until they're all pretty much smooth. Then you can put this onto it. Then you can push down. It's less likely to go off because all the pressure's already in the chamber. So I'm gonna show you that. So I have one here lined up. All my uh, bits and pieces are on top, probably gonna fall off. All right, so it has some pressure. So when I, uh, when I go to push down on this, I'll get a few of them, and some of them give off a big bang. Some of them, you really have to break that pressure in there because they've been jammed in there, like I said, for 50 years, if not more. So I'm gonna push down, you're gonna feel the pressurize. I'm gonna hit this almighty bang. It's gonna feel like the springs on the top of your, uh, the top of your press is going, it's breaking, but it's not. There we go. It's such a pressure relief that it just goes through the springs. 
it was such a pressure relief. And now once you've done that, you may even hear it bang of one or two pieces more. It depends how it comes out. And again, there you go. You're going to push it all the way down, literally down to the top of the head. Okay, so I'm just shy of it. Like I said, if you're doing this, do them all. I know one's in the way. So let me just move the camera so you can see. As you can see, I've uh, that was a better view. I should have done that to begin with. As you can see, I've broken the seal. I've pushed it down, and it's almost, almost flush, but not exactly flush. Um, I'm gonna get my socket. That's in my pocket. <laughs> socket in my pocket. Oh, God. <laughs> So now I have it in there, I can now butt it up to it. Uh, I can pressure, I can bring it down to the, just basically, um, so I get the tiniest bit of pressure, just enough that it stops it moving. Just enough that I can make sure that I can, I can try flush it off as best I can. And like I said, the reason for that is it's, it's less likely to go sideways or go outwards, because obviously the weakest point is that little lip or bellow at the very top, because it's narrower. So, because it's ha most of the way in the chamber, it's less likely to push out on you. Uh, plus, you've broken the seal, so it should go down pretty easy enough. And there she goes. Remember, there's two different sides of the valves. Um, I can press this all the way down until it falls out and it will literally fall out the bottom. I had got some cardboard underneath to catch it. Because uh, I don't know why, whenever it hits the floor, it always wants to, it wants to go to the furthest point. It's just amazing. Or it hides behind something, it just seems to want to always do that. So when it pops out, you know, it'll just simply fall away from the head and that's how you know it's all, uh, out all the way. We're almost there, because there's no. There it goes. So. Didn't go too far this time. Uh, like I said, I had got cardboard underneath just to catch it. So there you go. The bottom guide is out. Oh, God. So there she is out. Um, I'm gonna focus it in. So there's the top, you can see the ring, you can literally see that ring where it was 16 mil out and then the pressure, but you can see all the carbon at the bottom and that's where you're trying to break is that seal, that, uh, that seal of carbon down here. Because even though this got sandblasted, it's still terrible. So now I can actually clean inside it. Now, let's lead into the next part, putting them back in. Um, they do have to be 16 millimeters from... Uh, from here up 16 mil now if you actually measure them then they're never actually 16 mil believe it or not just take a normal uh, micro gauge uh, reader or meter now I'll always go over 16 so I'll go let's say to 19 I'll place it down and I'll just push it down to where it meets This case it is 16.15 millimeters now you want to get roughly the same uh, ideally 16 is perfect um, so what do you use well let's go back to Home Depot I went in the Home Depot and I took this with me and I started measuring all nuts washers and everything to find what's the best thing I can use and this turned out to be what I found out to be the best it's a brass pipe cap um, it's a 3 8 um, I'd give you the barcode, but this is the way it came in the bag. It was terrible. Um, and I measured it. So I just happened to measure it. I took out the tool and I was looking for something that was pretty much in the sixteenths. And when I measured it, 16.12. That's pretty good. Now, since remember, since this was a cap, it's treaded on the inside. 
I had to drill out this hole. I had to drill that out. I drilled it big enough that I knew that the uh, the valve guy would fit in. It's a little bit of play, but not too much. But I know it goes in. So putting it back in, what would happen is, yes, you would uh, put it in. You'd push down and get it, let's say, well, get it down some of the way. Then you'd put this over it and push the rest of the way. The whole idea is that when you push it down, you end up flush and then that should give you this, the uh, correct reading. Now, when you think, hey, hang on a second, I'm at 16.12, I'm not 16 millimeters. That's correct. The reason why I didn't go down to 16 is that I know when I push down, I get pressed and I hit this and I actually hit the nut, it's gonna bellow in some way. It's gonna have to expand, which means it's gonna probably go down. So I wanna give that tiny bit of leeway, that tiny bit of, yep, if it's at 16.1, that's pretty good. That's literally one millimeter. Um, remember, it's supposed to be engineered to the uh, thousands of an inch, so um, that'd be good enough. And like I said, this nut I found to be pretty, um, pretty accurate. Pretty much the best I could find on one piece without adding two pieces or without trying to find a sleeve on the internet that was 16 millimeters. So get one of these. And uh, like I said, when I got the press down on it. I'm not going to do it on these because I have to take these all out and clean it. But when I press down, I know it's going to go a little bit further. So that's why I left it and I didn't grind it. Well, not grind it. I took it to the wire wheel instead, not the grinder, because I didn't want it to end up being waved. So just uh, after I drilled, I took it to the wire wheel. And I just kept going over and over. And I know I could take millimeters off as I went along. But I didn't want to go too low. So... That's my tip and what you need or might want to go get. Go to Home Depot, buy one of these. I think it's like $3 or something like that. And that will set you up for your guides to put them in. And that's pretty much it. Um, I said, it's, it's, not, it's not complicated. It's not hard. Obviously, having to press makes it easier. If you don't, I can't see it. I, I don't know. Um, maybe your machine shop will take them out. If you're going to get a machine, they'll take them out for you, all right, which is great. And all you have to worry about is putting them back in. You shouldn't need that much pressure putting them back in. As long as your ports is free so um yeah that's it thanks for watching any comments questions or any of that by all means uh, leave them any questions any or anything else drop me a message get in contact with me and if you like it hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you like all the other videos and yeah thanks for watching